Uh, good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's rearranged scrutiny meeting of the um, 20th of December, 2023. Uh, just to remind uh, members of the committee, this meeting obviously has been filmed and will be out on YouTube, so best behaviour just before Christmas, please. Uh, first item on our agenda is apologies for absence. I believe we've had apologies from Councillor Bailey, Councillor Claymore, Councillor Maycock and Councillor Price. Do we have any other apologies I need to be aware of? Excellent. The next item on our agenda is minutes of the previous meeting. Is the committee content they are a correct set? I do quickly have one thing just to mention. We just need to add Becky's name to the actual list of attendees, just a slight little typo. So that will be corrected afterwards if committee's comfortable that way. Apart from that, do I have a mover and a seconder? Moved by one, moved by, seconded by two. Okay. Item three, any declarations of interest? There are none, thank you. Which takes us to item four, chair's update. Uh, the only real update for me is apologies for this rearranged meeting. Uh, we had a slight uh, IT mishap, which meant the notification to the public didn't go out about the meeting for the seventh. So unfortunately, by the time it was kept caught, it meant we couldn't actually have the meeting without actually breaking the um, 2011 Localism Act, I believe it is, Andrew. So we had to quickly rearrange, so apologies for that. Uh, item five, responses to reports of the Corporate Scrutiny Committee. We have none at present. Uh, text us to item six, consideration of matters referred to the Corporate Scrutiny Committee from Cabinet or Council. We have none at present. Which takes us back to the item we has to come back to the committee, which is the quarter two performance report. Uh, members of the committee will be aware we unanimously voted the last time the committee met uh, because the leader of the council had unfortunately cancelled on us at the last minute and we had some serious questions about the cafe behind us we wanted to rearrange this meeting before approving this uh, obviously we're in a difficult position this evening that since that date the leader of the council has obviously stepped down from his role which means he's not there to be questioned which obviously puts us uh, back to stage one, which I think, again, reading the minutes this afternoon, we did look at it quite extensively, the quarter two performance report. However, if there are any more further questions this evening or anything anybody wants to raise, happy to do so. That's not to shut down any questions about next door. That's just to say that's the situation I see us in and I'm happy to open the floor there. No questions, no comments? Uh, just one from me, Mr. Barrett, if you could. Obviously, touching on one more time, the cafe next door, and obviously the demolition, obviously we've all now been briefed that, you know, it was beyond saving. We all understand that now to a degree. Obviously, an investigation was done, but we've also been told some measures have been put in place to stop a similar situation in future. I just wonder if you could quickly run the committee through what are those new measures in place, just so we understand in future how better communications will happen. Yeah, I mean, spe specifically around future high street funds, there's been a very clear instruction that all works that require any form of planning approval will go through full committee rather than um, the the process of could be delegated decision or could be committee so that's a safeguard now uh, any any alteration to any of the current planning permissions will be made by full committee um, and there is a report due at an extraordinary council on the 15th of january um, to discuss the whole Future High Street Fund project, which um, uh, that's going to be a format of a, a presentation um, by officers of the whole scheme, because I think it's timely we do that. There's, there's been a lot of changes of, uh, of elected members um, since the, the concept started, and then there's going to be a specific discussion around um, some of the project updates which require uh, council endorsement. Um, so that's on the, the 15th. Uh, perhaps looking for committee's indulgence, obviously you said that's now the case for future high streets fund. Would it be the committee's wish, if I threw this out there, we actually send a recommendation to cabinet that any council asset go through the process of either licensing or planning, should it be a licensing or planning matter? That's wherefore there's um, a clear line of understanding and communication. I'm just throwing that out there as an idea. I don't know what the committee thinks make a comment on that not not to say no because that's clearly not in my my gift to do uh, we have the case at the moment where there is some works to a tree in the town center that needs to be done to allow a hoarding to go round one of the future high street fund properties um, that's got to go to full committee 
to get the necessary permission to prune the tree because it's in a conservation area whereas normally that would be a delegated decision so that is actually going to delay works to some extent only one example but i think we perhaps need to be very clear on the rationale as to why um because it, it it's wrong sometimes to take a um a decision that is minor with no impact to the expense of a full committee but we've got to get the governance right yeah. to make sure comms are better in the future if, if, if that makes sense okay with the permission committee can i touch base with you offline about this and we find a way of looking into that to make sure we capture this in future properly with all council assets everybody be comfortable with that yeah uh, council bain yeah, I mean, I'd be comfortable with it because governance should assist decision making, not obstruct it. Um, so I'd agree with that entirely. What uh, what concerned us about the cafe was largely a, a lot of it was not on public record, and it seemed to happen in an obscure way. And it's about how we resolve that to make sure that people are fully engaged, not just councillors but people in general who have an interest in what's going on here, uh, that they are fully engaged and fully informed. Any further questions or comments? Okay, I'm happy to move the recommendation then that this committee endorse the quarterly performance report and send it off onto cabinets. Could I possibly have a seconder? And Councillor Doyle, all those in favour? That is carried, thank you. Obviously, the two officers to my left are free to go and enjoy their Christmas if they wish, or free to sit there if they want to enjoy the rest of the meeting. Entirely up to yourselves. <laughs> Bye, Andrew. <Give> <laughs> Given this is it now for Christmas, because it's a wedding tomorrow. Enjoy. Wish the committee season's greetings and I look forward to seeing you all in the new year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Becky. Thank you all. Have a To just bear with me one second i'm just going to find my update okay the next item on our agenda is working group updates uh, internet seems to be very slow bear with me Obviously, on the 13th of November, uh, there was a working group uh, in regards to the first item on our scrutiny, working plan agenda around housing repairs, which was obviously damp and mould. Uh, if you recall, I was unable to be present uh, that evening, but Councillor Maycock led on it. Councillor Maycock has briefed me since. Uh, were you there, Chris? I was. Right, so I might, I might lean on you in a second, Steve, if I miss anything. As I understand it, Paul Weston gave a brief update um, that was also submitted to the Housing and Homelessness Advisory Board that sets out how we do damp and mould inspections. Uh, that report is available. If anybody wants a copy, shout out. Uh, Paul, uh, Mr Weston explained many scenarios of how damp and mould can come about and how the process has evolved even since December 2022. Uh, members of the working group had opportunities to ask questions and clarifications, such as things like Capital Works Programme and how the council recalled investigations and the residents' willingness to respond to recommendations from inspections. Uh, at the end of the meeting, Councillor Maycock has informed me the following actions were requested, which I'll make sure full briefings come to us early January. Uh, a further information around one month from that meeting of the same format spreadsheet that went to the Housing and Homelessness Advisory Board with additional information, substantive information to follow and more information of how damp and mould and what we're currently recording is done so we can continue to look into that. Uh, request the uh, Equons uh, contract to see how that's set out in damp and mould. Again, I'll get that before the committee in the next couple of weeks. And request for the RAG rating report in relation to damp and mould. So, so we get an update on that. And he also said, and obviously this needs to come through full committee, uh, some suggested recommendations to Cabinet. A, to add an additional resource to TBC repairs team when a MLDINS code is inputted for a property, a manual look back for the history of repairs for that property 
to be conducted to identify if damp or mould has been previous since has been a previous issue since at that property, or for the tenant at the previous property. B, that damp and mould inspection process become part of the repairs policy rather than standing on its own. Uh, the working group was also in agreement that Equin should be called into the working group after members have had a chance to examine the contractual agreement. So um, that's what's come out of the working group as I understand it. Uh, I don't know if I missed anything, Steve, if you were present. I don't think so. Obviously, I open the floor there if anybody's got any questions or comments, but I'll get all this information out to everybody, uh, including, that's what I'm trying to get at the minute, the rest of the stuff together. And I would suggest the working group sit down again, try and do early January after the new year, if everybody's comfortable. And then we'll also sit and discuss how we then get into the repairs side as well, because obviously I'm conscious now that the year's starting to run away from us. Any questions or comments? Councillor Bain. Yeah, I've had a, an ongoing case, which I think I've mentioned here before, about somebody with, with damp and mould, and they were promised a visit, which has never happened. And I was actually there when the, the promise was made, so I know it happened. I think there has to be a way of tracking these things more efficiently and effectively than currently happens. Because, you know, you know what happens, the day job takes over. Well, you know, you've got to find a way of tracking these things. Is that system in place? Is it visible? Do we know how to access it? It's, it's those sorts of things. Because I, this particular one is, is um, a very vulnerable person in a house with damp and mould, which has been there for over two years now and really needs resolving. And I've got to find a way of doing it. So any guidance for councillors about how you can make sure that these damp and mould issues are tracked through and if somebody's vulnerable, fast track through so that it can be dealt with. Yeah, thank you, Councillor I think that's what the first recommendation Councillor Maycock taps on. We're trying to get to how do we track it and make sure is it happening to the same person all over again or is it happening to the same property over and over again rather than it being a new case generated every time? And I think that's what we're trying to get to, that first recommendation that how do we track it? So obviously he has put you know two recommendations there. Now, I'm happy to move we send those to Cabinet. Uh, from our working group via us, if I could have a seconder. And Councillor Bain will quickly do all those in favour. That is carried, but that wasn't to shut down the debate, obviously, it's just to take us forward. So, yeah, it looks like, you know, some good ideas. And I think once we can review, as Councillor Bain says, how it's tracked, what is happening, start getting the data fed back, maybe we can get a better insight into how some of these issues are being dropped. I think that's where we need to go now as a council with damp and mould is how we're tracking it, who's keeping their eye on it, you know, is it regularly happening to the same person in different properties or is it just the same properties and understand what's causing these issues. Everybody comfortable with that? Councillor Bain. If we can just add in something about where people are particularly vulnerable and this is a person who's um, in their late 70s with respiratory conditions and a child who appears to be now suffering from uh, respiratory conditions as well if there's a way of ensuring that those people are actually dealt with as a priority that would be helpful that actually the vulnerable uh, prioritised in damp and mould issues. Obviously, we need to understand what that means, but we've moved to cabinet that actually should be a top priority with immediate effect. We'll, we'll find the word in between us, but is everybody comfortable we add that one on? Yeah. We'll take that as carry. Thank you. So that's three to take. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. As I say, I'll try and get us together early January. We'll start then work into the next item, which is the repair side, and I'll try and get all the information out to you as quick as I can about what's come out of the damper mode, like the contract, like everything else. Everybody comfortable? Fantastic. Which takes us to item nine, the forward plan. Obviously, the forward plan has been circulated. I think the question is, is there anything on the forward plan that anybody would wish to fetch through corporate scrutiny? There's nothing jumped out for me. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, that takes us then on to item 10. Obviously, corporate scrutiny uh, work plan and action log. So our next meeting, which I believe is the 7th of February, yeah. memory serves, yeah. at the minute has the next quarterly performance report. Obviously, we'll have the updates from the working groups and further discussions on housing repairs. So if we can put an item on there, housing repairs yeah. working group. Yeah. 
Does anybody have any other items they want to raise for the 7th of February? I do think that's going to be a meaty enough agenda as it is. Yep. Okay. Well, like I said, the meeting's not till the 7th of February. If any member of the committee has something burning, give us a call, send us an email. I'm sure I can speak to our wonderful officers and have it added in. In that case, then, all that's left for me to do with you guys is wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And that is, of course, extended to Carol in our audience and our two officers. Thank you very much. And I'll close the meeting there.